up YouTube, it's your man Miss Miss Cool Cat County YouTube representing the Birds. So Carson Wentz just did his little press conference via Zoom. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna watch it. He looks Jack. Looking Jack. He's gonna talk about his wide receiver group. This crazy offseason. He don't give two shit about no Damn, top 100 list, even though it's bogus. The most disrespected quarterback in all of the NFL is about to speak. And we're going to talk about it right now. Birds. Room and 
Um, you know, everyone had a lot of respect for him. So I know there'll be a lot of guys that um, are very passionate about a lot of different things and are able to um, articulate and, and be um, the Eagles and be who we are and represent that. So uh, I look forward to be one of those one of those guys as well. Go ahead, John, and then Ruben Frank. Hey, Carson. Uh, just wondering about your offseason. Obviously, you didn't have the ability to to be at the Novacare Complex, have the OTAs, many can't. How much were you able to get accomplished, and how much do you feel you you connected with your new teammates? Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely different. You know, it was different for me. It was different for a lot of guys. Um, you know, some guys were still trying to get workouts in with other guys, but then um, it just didn't feel safe for a lot of people too. So there's a lot of factors involved for for a lot of people. Um, I was fortunate. Um, you know, I got a gym at the house, and I got space. You know, a lot of grass to to do a lot of my workouts in. So I've been. Uh, very fortunate and I still feel you know more than ready um, once now that I'm back in the building and working out um, but I do know it's been tough for some guys you know everyone had different access to gyms and uh, fields and everything so um, everyone's kind of coming to end this you know in a pretty decent spot but you know guys are buried uh, quite a bit and so that's that's a big part of this early um, training camp mode is just making sure guys are on the same page with their strength and conditioning and, and ready to go before we uh, really hit the ground rolling with practice. Room and then less. Hey Carson, thanks for doing this. Um, I, I don't know if you saw the top hundred players in the league thing that came out the other day, um, where you weren't on it. Um, <laughs> does that kind of thing? I, I know you're motivated no matter what, but does that kind of thing piss you off? Does it does it motivate you? Does it drive you? What, what was your reaction to that? Yeah, um, good question, Rube. You know, you've seen me over the years. I, I usually don't get too caught up in a lot of that stuff. Uh, when when I see it, you know, I usually wish I didn't see it or didn't hear about it. Um, but, you know, you can always use anything and everything as just a little bit of extra motivation. So, um, you know, that is what it is. It's voted on by the players. It is what it is. Uh, I'm not going to let that uh, cause me to lose sleep or anything, but I do look forward to, uh, you know, going out this year showing what I can do with my team. Uh, Les and then John Clark. Carson, uh, are you surprised by the number of players who have opted out so far? Uh, do you think this is going to have a big effect on the season? And I know you said uh, in the first question that you never know how all this is going to unfold, of course. But do you really think there's a good chance of having a full season and a Super Bowl and on schedule? Does that look likely to you at this point? Yeah, to answer the latter part of your question, um, you know, for me, I like to look at it as a, you know, the glass half full. And so I'm optimistic that, you know, we can – execute uh, all the protocols, guys can stay safe, guys can stay healthy, um, but I'm also not an idiot. You know, I, you just don't fully know how everything's going to unfold. So until um, something changes, I'm going to be here, I'm going to be working, I'm going to be ready to go just like all my teammates. Um, as far as guys opting out, uh, I'm not surprised to be honest. Um, just because, like I can answer the first question, I think all of us, and especially guys with either health conditions or family or, you know, maybe some guys, you know, live with their parents or, or whatever, uh, or look after their parents, you know, you've got to take into consideration your family, and it's not just about you. So uh, I completely respect the guys that do opt, that did opt out and that will continue to opt out, um, but I'm not surprised by it just because of the state that, uh, that we're all living in right now. Thank you. John and then Bo. Hey, Carson, when you arrived at the Open Care Complex the other day, they had a video of you and everybody commented how you look bigger. Have you gained a certain amount of pounds of weight uh, and, and last year going into the season you had you had a certain thing that you were concentrating on uh, and really wanted to concentrate on for your future anything changed a little bit this year being quarantined and stuff like that um, nothing really changed um, you know for me the last couple off seasons I was you know dealing with injuries and trying to bounce back from injuries so um, this off season I was really able to to get after it and, and work out a little harder in the gym and all those things so um, you know I haven't gained anything you know insane uh, for weight, but I've definitely gained some weight, and I feel really good with, with where I'm at, so um, appreciate the compliment that you got. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go Bo and then Howard. Uh, Carson, given the uh, you know the turnover in the offensive staff this offseason, um, how, how different do you expect the offense to look? How much are you guys able to implement without having uh, you know, the grass time in the spring, and uh, you know what, what kind of challenge will that be? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. That's a great question. You know, I think for the most part, we're going to look the same. You know, 
Um, but obviously we're going to have new bodies out there. Um, there's some young guys that we're looking forward to, you know, getting a chance to work with and step up. And, um, you know, Coach Rich coming in and, and adding a new um, element and just with his, you know, his ability to, to – uh, marry up the run game with the play actions with the naked game and all those things. So I think some things will look a little different, um, but I'm, I'm really excited about it, and I think it will uh, really complement what we as an offense and who we are identity-wise. Um, I think coaches really have a good grasp of who we are and how we can um, get the most out of me and out of the, the rest of the sporting cast. Okay. Howard and then Zach Berman. Carson, uh, playing off the last question, with the lack of grass time, uh, this year, how can this team really be, especially from your standpoint, the offense, to be ready with the lack of grass time this year? Yeah, well, first off, genius, I haven't seen you in a long time. That is a heck of a beard you got going there. Um, <laughs> hey, Kelsey. I'm, I'm very distracted by the beard, you know, the question. Um, but, you know, I'm confident. Uh, for us, I think, you know, the, the lack of grass time, um, I think that makes it tough for us, but I think it makes it tough for, for really everybody across the Everyone's dealing with it. Um, so if I'm being honest, I think we're in a good place just because we do have a lot of carryover with um, a lot of the same coaches. You know, obviously we've added some pieces, but uh, for the most part, the offense hasn't changed. And so, and we got a lot of the same uh, guys around. We've added some new pieces, but um, I do feel like we're going to be in a good place um, here once we're able to finally get out there and practice and, and hit the ground running. Hey, at, at this time of year, in some of these past years, you, you've mentioned benchmarks, whether it was third down and red zone, completion percentage of at one point. Is there anything, as, as you look at your game or your number, that you specifically want to improve upon or hone on this year? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, the what you just said, red zone and third down, that's going to be something I'm going to hit on every year, um, You know, whether we're first in the league or last in the league. Uh, just because I've really realized you know, over the first couple of years of my career that you know, those downs make or break ball games all the time. Um, and so, for me, I, I would also love to see us, you know, have some more explosive plays. You know, we had a lot of long drives last year, and um, obviously, hopefully, getting Sean back and some of these younger guys um, can help. You know, lend itself to some more explosive plays. Um, maybe we don't always have to put together 15 play drives, but um, if that's what we got to do, that's what we got to do. Um, so, I'd love to see some more explosive plays, but um, really, just keep on top of it with third down and red zone. And, uh, for me personally, just taking care of the ball. You know, I think you know, I, I've limited the interceptions over the years. I just got to keep, you know, getting better at in the pocket, holding on to the ball, trying to extend plays, um, knowing, you know, when to say die and, and when to try and stretch the play out. Um, and we've talked about that a lot. You know, it's something that I'm always going to be um, trying to learn and be hard on myself. So uh, those, are, those are some things I'm definitely trying to work on. Go ahead, Jimmy, and then Mike Ted. Hey, Carson. Uh, in the past, uh, the team had you take a look at receivers leading up to the draft that allowed you to give input on those guys. Did you do that again this year? And then beyond that, what are your first impressions of uh, Jalen John and Quiz? Yeah, as far as input, I mean, it's always very limited. Um, you know, I definitely watched the receiver class. I knew, um, you know, a lot of the top names and, you know, definitely followed along with that. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't have a ton of input, especially, you know, we weren't in the building ever or anything like that. But, um, my first impressions is they're all facts. You know, they can all roll. Um, so I'm excited about that. You know, we've barely been on the grass together. It's just been really two days now. Um, and we're not, you know, practicing or any of those things. So I'm really excited once, you know, we get the pads on and we're, we're full speed out there. But um, my first impression is all three of them, they, they can roll. They're, they're quick, they're fast, um, you know, natural ball catchers. So uh, I'm excited for all those guys. They all have a, you know, they all have a great chance to help this team right away this year, even in week one. And so. Uh, not to put too much pressure on those guys, but uh, I'm excited to see how they develop here over the next couple of weeks. We have time for a couple more, so we'll do Mike and then Jess Gaberski and then Elliot. Hey Carson, thanks for doing this. Um, JJ obviously had an uneven rookie season. Uh, throughout the virtual program, what have you seen from kind of a mental side and like a work ethic and, and uh, communication standpoint? Have you seen improvement from JJ and what do you think he needs to improve on on the field? Yeah, uh, I've been excited with JJ. You know, he's a guy that uh, is, you know, I've never questioned his work ethic, whether that's studying or, um, you know, weight room or on the field or staying after catching catching balls. That's never, work ethic's never been something I've questioned with him. And uh, that definitely carried over this offseason. You know, I was able to um, catch up with him and talk to him quite a bit. And 
um, you know, get to know him even even more as a teammate and as as a friend, but also uh, football wise. And so I'm excited to see what what he does and how he you know grows off of uh, like you said his up and down first year. And uh, I'm excited I'm excited for him to see what he can do. And um, I think he's uh, in a, in a really good place. And so uh, for him, it's just continuing to gain that confidence. You know, I think it, it, it rose towards the end of the year with the, with more reps and everything. And uh, you saw him and really a lot of the younger guys step up. And so. Uh, I'm excited to see him as he keeps growing with that confidence and takes ownership of that role, uh, what he can do to help this team. Go ahead, Josh. Hey, Carson, hope the baby's doing well. Now is okay. I wanted to ask you just how much of a challenge do you think not only camp will be, but this entire season not playing at a moment. You see kind of what's going on with the Phillies, what happened with the Marlins, even with you guys with Lee and some of your other players. How much of a challenge will this all be, not just for you and each of you, Guy, but the entire team, coaching staff, other teams, you guys are on this season. Yeah, uh, very aware that it is going to be a challenge. Uh, you know, it's we, we've talked about it, you know, a, a fair amount, and it's you got to be a professional 24 um, 7, not just when you're in the building now, but it's it's how do you take care of yourself uh, out of the building and, and you know, be smart and, and handle your business. And so, it, we really are all in this thing together. Um, it's we say that all the time, it's kind of the cliche thing, but uh, has a little different meaning this year. Um, and, and I'm not I'm not dumb to know like different ways you guys can still get it. Like things might happen. Um, and, and so you, you never know how this is gonna unfold. But um, you know, we're gonna do everything we can as a team to make sure, especially as leaders, to make sure guys are, are handling their business, you know, not just in the building, but outside the building, who they're around, what they're going to do. Um, so it's gonna look different and it is gonna be a challenge, but uh, I think we in, in Philly are up for it, and you know, hopefully everyone around the league uh, is up for it as well. Last one. Go ahead, Owen. Uh, Carson, I saw you work out this offseason with some of the younger receivers in Houston. I was curious what that experience was like and what made you decide to take Houston. Yeah, um, it was good. It was good. It was short, and obviously it was still um, an interesting time. And then, you know, Texas started to um, become a hot zone for, for COVID as well. So, um, you know, that kind of limited what we could do, but it was good work. It was, it was quick, um, but it's really just good to, to get to see a couple of the guys even uh, for the brief couple of days that we were. And, um, you know, Texas is a great place to work out when it's, when it's hot and you're trying to get acclimated to, to a little bit of the heat. So that's why we're down there. All right. Thanks, Carson. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. And there you have it. The Carson Wentz press conference. He don't give two shit about no damn list. Thanks, Jalen Ray, Arquez, Watkins, and John Hightower are quick and fast. Optimistic about playing in the season. Looking stacking huge. <laughs> Lifting some weights. And sorry to disappoint all y'all in the NFC East, but um, he's playing this season. He ain't out to now. Talk to the wife. Talk to the baby girl. He's playing this season. <laughs> Was upset that Marquis Goodwin opt out, but he understands. Look at huge stack lifting weights. <laughs> y'all in trouble. Y'all in trouble. Fly, go fly, walk into him. Um, y'all in trouble. Oh.